Hi everybody, a video that I really hope you find so helpful at uh, looking at the hot topics that are likely to feature in your exam this year. Who knows, some of these topics could be the exact areas where you get asked long essay questions. Uh, the way I've hunted these kind of topic areas down is that the exam papers are normally written two years in advance of the paper, maybe a year minimum for some of the exam boards. So we're looking really within the last two years, what have been the hot topic areas around the world, especially in the UK economy? where exam boards will focus their long essay questions. Well, let's look for macroeconomics. First of all, a key area I suggest that you revise hard is globalization. A huge, huge topic area here that's been debated so much in the press. If you think about you know, Donald Trump and his anti-globalization march, really, but also the nature of politics all around the world and how all these very hard right-wing groups uh, have argued against protectionism. So certainly, uh, a long essay question debating globalization, but make sure you're prepared for a question like that. Within the topic area of globalization, we can specify free trade. I can see a long essay question coming about the pros and cons of free trade for an individual economy, let's say. Um, this again has been heavily debated by many politicians and economists. It's been the focus of many conventions and different uh, gatherings by major institutions like the IMF, for example. Um, so make sure that you're aware of the pros and cons of free trade, but also the pros and cons of protectionism. It's within this topic area of trade and protectionism. So making sure you're aware of the different types of protectionism, the arguments for and against using protectionism, and why lots of politicians are looking at a protectionist attitude at the moment. Uh, so it all kind of comes under this bracket of globalization, trade, protectionism. Important stuff that you understand these arguments in preparation for a long essay. We can't ignore Brexit, right? Brexit's been uh, a key topic area for discussion over the last year, massive since the referendum in June last year. So yes, a question about Brexit could well come up, you know, examples like to be topical. They like to ask questions that are current, and Brexit certainly fills that criteria. Uh, what I would say is that a question about Brexit would be quite focused, because so much is unknown about Brexit at the moment. So it would be very tough for them to ask you a question to predict the future with Brexit. And that's very unlikely considering we have very little information, considering that the government at the moment is not giving us very much. And a lot of it will be based around what happens in this recent election for us to understand more the negotiation that will take place with Brexit. But maybe a question uh, where you're discussing the pros and cons of Britain's decision to leave the European Union. A basic question along those lines could well come up, you know, where you've just got to argue the case on the one hand and on the other hand for and against Brexit there. Um, that question I can see coming up for sure if they want to go Brexit. Exam boards, uh, most of them were very, very kind of EU heavy uh, over the last few years. So for them to go Brexit again, who knows? I mean, brand new exam papers might well come up this year, but I reckon it will be a narrow focus question like that if it came up. I was surprised if they asked you to go into the future and to talk about the future implications of the Brexit vote when we don't really know what the negotiations are. The weak pound that's happened post-Brexit referendum could well come up as a long essay question. Um, it's a very recent phenomenon, so maybe your exam papers were written before that took place, in which case it won't come up. But let's say the exam papers were written around the Brexit referendum time, or just after, then this is a very hot topic area, a big thing that's happened in the UK economy, which could easily come up as a long essay question, where you argue uh, your arguments on the one hand, why the weak pound uh, could be or has been advantageous for the UK economy, on the other hand, why it might not be advantageous, why it's caused problems in the UK economy, could easily be a long essay question. Lots of economic theory to talk about there, but it's also been a good year since we've seen the impact of the weak pound and we've had time to collect data and see exactly what's happened to the UK economy as a result of the weak pound. So this could easily come up as an essay question. It's just whether it's a bit too premature or not, but certainly you should prepare. When you prepare for this, do you have data to back up um, the arguments that you're making? Strong likelihood, I reckon, of this question coming up. Um, if the exam papers were written during that time. Something that I think is absolutely huge, and I've really got quite a strong inclination that this could well come up in the exam, is to discuss the consequences of the UK's current account deficit. Now, this has been in the headlines, um, especially around the time when your exam paper would have been written. You know, at that time it was a hot topic area. It's eased off a bit now that the current account um, deficit to GDP is actually a bit lower. It's less of a concern than maybe it was about a year, a year and a half ago where there are real concerns about sterling collapse and the implications on the UK economy of our current account deficit. But I really see that featuring in your exam. That's, I think, a very strong likelihood uh, coming up, considering at the time how big a deal it was. So 
understanding the implications, the consequences of our current account deficit, being able to argue on two sides and evaluate, definitely make sure that you do that well. Something again that was a very hot topic area when your exam papers would have been written was the idea of deflation. About a year, year and a half ago, the UK economy was experiencing some deflation, very minor bout of deflation coming from the supply side. So maybe a long essay question where you're discussing the consequences of deflation on the UK economy or discussing whether deflation is a threat to the UK economy or whether deflation should uh, be a concern for the UK economy, whether there needs to be intervention against deflation, something along those lines could easily come up. You know, More recently, since the Brexit referendum, we've seen inflation, right? But since we've seen inflation, it's been so short term, I don't necessarily see um, your exam papers being focused on inflation, uh, considering how it's a very recent phenomenon, whereas deflation was taking place around the time your exam papers were written. But um, whether it's a deflation versus inflation question, you know, so discuss whether the consequences of deflation are greater or worse than the consequences of inflation. Discuss whether deflation is more of a threat to the UK economy than inflation. Something along those lines. Just depends on whether inflation was too much of a recent phenomenon. But prepare for a, a question on deflation for sure and make sure you're aware of the costs and benefits of inflation as well, a very recent phenomenon there. A question that has come up so many times in the past is one on budget deficit reduction in the UK and still I reckon that could be a huge topic area for you to be asked in the examination. Budget deficit reduction. Um, it's important that you're aware of the variety of questions. So maybe it's a discussion over whether the budget deficit reduction program is necessary. Discuss the implications of the budget deficit reduction program. This is just austerity, guys, right? Discuss the impact of the budget deficit reduction program on the UK economy or on UK macro performance, something along those lines. You need to know that Philip Hammond has recently ditched the, uh, the pledge to run a budget surplus by 2020, but he's not ditched the idea of austerity. So that is likely to remain. We need to see exactly what the Conservative Party is likely to do if they win the general election, which is uh, very likely, of course. But uh, what they're going to do uh, with respect to austerity and how strong it's going to be, we have to wait and see based on their manifesto. But he's certainly said to expect more austerity. That's not going to change. Um, so discussing the impact of austerity since 2010, that could well be a question. Maybe a discussion over whether it's necessary for the UK economy to continue with austerity going forward. That could well be a question. A discussion over whether ditching the budget surplus pledge by 2020 is in the interest of the UK economy. That could come up too. Uh, so just a general question over whether it's necessary, discussing the impact of it, uh, the impact on macro performance, the impact on certain macro indicators, the reasons why they've done it. You know, questions along those lines. Make sure you know the idea of austerity very well. You can discuss the impact of austerity well. Within this topic of fiscal policy, a long essay question about direct tax cuts is something that we've seen in the UK economy uh, for a long time now. You know, regular cuts to income tax via an increase in the tax-free allowance, via a widening of income tax bans, but also cuts to corporation tax, you know, so discussing the impacts of those. In August 2016, the Monetary Policy Committee in the Bank of England decided to use expansionary monetary policy post the Brexit referendum to try and negate the idea of a shock post that referendum. They cut interest rates, they also uh, pumped more money into the economy through quantitative easing, £60 billion pumped into the economy. Um, so being able to discuss the, uh, the implications of that. Now, I reckon that's a little bit premature because it happened so recently. I don't think your exam papers would have been written as late as that, but just in case, being prepared for a question like that is a good idea. The UK government has been very supply-side policy heavy recently as well. And this goes back over many years. So discussing the implications of various supply-side policies, whether it's on growth, on unemployment, on inflation, on macro performance. Make sure you know the various supply side policies that the UK government has used, you know, education reform, apprenticeship related policies, uh, adult retraining policies that we've seen, infrastructure pledges, for example, um, tax allowances for investment, R&D subsidies, tax reforms like corporation tax, like income tax, deregulations that have existed, recent privatizations, for example, that you need to know as well, recent uh, examples of competition policies, but also labor reforms, whether it's trade union reform, whether it's welfare reform, make sure you, you understand the implications of all of these policies as supply side policies on the UK economy. That could be a hot topic area that gets asked in your exam too. Another big topic area is the area of aid, discussing the pros and cons of foreign aid. You know, an interesting stat is that since 2010, there have been large cuts to many public services and government departments. Um, a few have been protected, like the NHS. 
um, but generally cuts throughout, this is austerity, spending cuts in the economy. Whereas the amount of money being spent on development, i.e. development aid, is actually increased by around 40%. That's a very, very large increase considering we've had major cuts to lots of other areas in the economy. And it's something Theresa May has come out recently and said will continue to be protected going forward. There won't be austerity cutting spending when it comes to foreign aid, for example. Now that's very interesting. So uh, a long essay question discussing the pros and cons of UK aid, for example, or just generally the pros and cons of aid could well be a question given uh, what's happened recently. And one more major topic area is the idea of financial market regulation. Financial market regulation has really moved on over the last two or three years or so. Uh, a lot of movements within Basel um, about recommendations over leverage ratios, capital ratios, liquidity ratios, etc. Lots of talk about whether to separate commercial banking and investment banking. Um, lots of discussion about financial market regulation and to make sure that the financial industry works for the benefit of society and we don't have a meltdown like we saw in 2008. So a general question discussing whether financial market regulation is the most effective way to reduce systemic risk, to reduce the chances of bank failure within the financial industry could well be a 25 market too. And recent knowledge over uh, financial market regulation is important there, so worthwhile to prepare yourself that way too. Well, now that you've got this information, what good is it? How should you use it? Well, first of all, you've got to make sure that your content knowledge around all these topic areas is perfect. I've got videos on my channel that cover absolutely every topic area I've just mentioned. So make sure you go and watch those videos and make sure that your theory, economic knowledge is perfect. So then you can um, argue your case on the one hand. On the other hand, you can come to a judgment, for example. You can evaluate these key points really, really well. Another key thing you need to make sure is that you can structure essays. So if I've just told you right now all the key topic areas that are likely to come and the kind of long essay question that you can get, then make sure you can structure and form an essay plan around these topic areas. So if it does come up in the essay, you can just go bang, I know exactly what I'm trying to do, I know exactly the kind of points I want to make, let's just go and get this done. Another key thing you need to make sure is that you've got good application. Go and hunt it down, do your research, get great data and application to back up your theoretical points that you're going to be making in your essay. Give an extra 5% to these topic areas and you'll be 100% banging when your exam comes. Uh, so really hope you like this video guys, hope it prepares you really well. And let's just hope that a lot of these questions come up and you're well prepared for them. All the best guys, see you all in the next video.